All right, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining Blue Triangle's webinar today with Carnival Cruise Line. Uh, we'll be discussing digital experience optimization and the approach Carnival is taking in this discipline. So as we move through today's session, please feel free to ask any questions in the window to your right. We'll address those questions at the end of the webinar during the Q&A. My name is Josh Carter, and I am the Director of Marketing here at Blue Triangle. And I'm joined by my colleague, Dan Booten, who is Blue Triangle's VP of Digital Experience Optimization, and Eric Leon, who is Carnival Cruise Line's Senior Performance and Monitoring Architect. So now Dan Booten is going to help us understand digital experience optimization and show some use cases around it using real Carnival data. Take it away, Dan. Great. Thank you, Josh, and thank everyone for uh, attending. So first, what we want to do is kind of define what is digital experience optimization. It's a, it's a term that's been used in, in, in marketing circles in different areas. And what essentially what it is from our standpoint is a revenue-centric approach to optimizing the entire digital experience, everything from marketing campaigns, including revenue performance and web performance. That's the reason why performance doesn't have web or revenue in front of it. It actually encompasses both. When marketing and IT talk about performance, they both wrap those into it. So that's our definition of DEO, and that's the basis for what you're going to hear today. So what, is it, what does DEO consist of? DEO consists of several areas over the past 20 years that have kind of evolved as silos in this space. Everything from customer journey mapping to exit rates to marketing analytics and campaign analysis uh, on the business side uh, and tag governance on the business side and tag measurement and object measurement, as well as the real user monitoring and synthetic monitoring that really provide the, the baseline why in, uh, in anything that uh, encompasses DEO. DEO, if you're looking at uh, customer journey and mapping and you want to understand why revenue isn't, isn't being driven the way you're hoping it would be driven, it would be nice to have a why component, and that's been lacking uh, in this space for, for a long time. Next one. So we're going to walk through some use cases. Uh, didn't want to bore you with, with product uh, uh, demo. So what we're going to do is actually walk through some use cases uh, that are, are essentially available and that are used uh, on a daily basis by many of our customers, in, including uh, in Carnival, which we'll talk about today. So the first one is essentially tracking marketing campaigns. A lot of our customers run uh, marketing campaigns, sometimes a few dozen, sometimes in the hundreds every week, uh, and they want to understand what the performance of those campaigns are. Uh, they they want to see everything from just generic traffic coming in, which is what you see here on the top, uh, to essentially campaign by campaign analysis. If we're if you're running a, a loyalty campaign and, and you send out an email to uh, maybe friends and family or your uh, your loyalty rewards members and subscribers, say on a Monday morning, you want to actually watch that launch, watch the content, make sure it's performing correctly, make sure revenue is performing correctly, uh, and make sure it goes off without a glitch. And what we're what we're doing here is we're doing it, uh, this screenshot is actually showing uh, a snapshot of something that's actually being done in real time. Uh, the campaigns actually can run uh, from the from the get-go and can actually, they're automatically uh, auto-refreshed. And um, essentially in this case, we're, the campaigns we're, we're measuring, uh, the one that's uh, actually more sailings, which is geared towards uh, returning visitors, um, has a, a, the highest conversion rate for all the campaigns here, and that's why it's uh, where it is in that spot. So. Analyzing a traffic source. One of the things that uh, marketing folks in, uh, lo love to do is to understand where, uh, where they're spending their ad dollars and where they're getting the most revenue for those ad dollars. So if they're doing a lot of ad dollars in Google Ads or Google Placement uh, or Facebook or uh, you know, Twitter or any, any other, again, uh, social media platforms, you want to be able to understand where your traffic's coming from and, uh, and if they're converting. If you're spending a lot of money on Google Ads and your uh, revenue is low and your traffic is low, uh, you probably might want to consider moving that money elsewhere to where you're getting more revenue and uh, you know more bang for your buck. But uh, the DEO platform provides a, an ability to be able to track that uh, ad revenue and understand where your where your users and and buyers are and customers are coming from. So one of the things we do, um, we, we we're very much into measuring success, uh, especially uh, year over year. So marketing is usually charged with uh, an MBO, management by objective, that sometimes says, hey, you, know, you have to increase your marketing and campaign revenue by 20% year over year. And it'd be nice if you could actually manage the campaigns and look at the performance based, you know, compared for the same period last year. Uh, and you want to look at order value, you want to look at visitors and page view and conversion rate, orders, order size, 
uh, and you know, most importantly, revenue. And you want to be able to do that in real time because if something's not working, uh, you want to be able to have the ability to adjust those campaigns on the fly, which I'll talk about uh, in a minute as well. Next one. And then on a micro level, you, you, in a campaign, you actually want to look at look at day over day. So if you want to compare yesterday to today or Monday of this week versus Monday of last week, say I'm running the same uh, campaign two or three weeks in a row, I want to understand, uh, am, I, am I getting the, the revenue? Is, is the campaign still uh, a valid campaign? Is it still successful or has it gone stale? And I usually liken that to a, uh, a Star Wars premiere where uh, everybody is going to the Star Wars movie when it first comes out and standing room only. But if you come back in six months, um, you probably have the theater to yourself. And that's really a, a, the ability to measure you know, when it's time to pull that campaign or when it's time to revamp or campaigns that may uh, run over a, a, a period of time and aren't just something that, that runs week to week. So one of the big things in DEO is essentially a customer journey. And customer journey, what we use it for, this is essentially what customers and what users do when they come to your site. And we segment traffic uh, in two different ways, actually three. We do top combined paths, which is everybody coming to the site, what are the top paths they're using, what are the, the, route, the routes most traveled. Uh, but what we really look at is converted versus non-converted. What is you know, a non-converted path? Why are people you know, not buying? What are they doing? And what we see here, and as an example, is this, this particular, this is actually the top path. And the last uh, part in the, in, the, uh, in the path is actually the itinerary page, and it's taking a really long time to load. It's eight seconds here, and it has a 100% exit rate. So um, that's the first time that we've shown exit rate. So traditionally, um, in typical category uh, web performance tools, you don't see exit rate yet. Exit rate is very, very critical uh, to folks in the business and in marketing because exit rate is essentially you've got an engaged customer. As you see here, you've got a customer that essentially took five steps with you, uh, yet he didn't purchase. So an exit rate that is that high with an engaged customer is something uh, definitely need to drill down and find out why. And the missing piece traditionally in marketing analytics tools that are just in that one space is web performance. So in this case, the reason why they're leaving is because web performance uh, is extremely poor here. Um, so by marrying those two uh, uh, metrics together, the web performance and, and exit rate, you're able to actually see uh, that this is something you need to drill into because it's impacting uh, revenue You've got because you've got no conversions here. So now when you look at converted paths, you see that the page speed uh, throughout the journey uh, is essentially a lot faster. Uh, right through conversion. In this one, you don't see any red. There's a lot of green and uh, not much yellow. Yellow is borderline fast. And on this particular uh, path, you, the itinerary pages is, is not traversed at all. Uh, and the performance is, is a lot faster. So we see that a lot. Uh, the journey is something we really pay a close attention to because uh, typically in the differences between the, the two journeys, converted and unconverted, there usually is something that a user or a customer is trying to avoid to, to make a purchase. And that, that could be anything from a, a, you know, a slow page, uh, an, an image on a page, not allowing it to, uh, to load and, and find, trying to find another way to buy, kind of like that uh, the, the beautifully paved uh, L-shaped sidewalk with uh, the grass worn out, uh, uh, everybody cutting around it. And that's kind of what you see here. So the other piece that's that's very very interesting is the new versus re returning. Uh, what we provide is the ability to, to to show what are new visitors doing versus returning visitors, and and how are they buying. Uh, with new versus returning, you want to be able to understand if people are coming to to your site and they aren't purchasing, so they're in the unconverted uh, part. Essentially, you want to understand are they are they not converting because of performance or you know, say it's something where they're, you know, trying to book a cruise and cruises, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, pricey items. They're not like uh, going to an office supply store and buying a pen. You don't do it on a, on a one click. You do a lot of research and analysis. And, and if your path here is showing things like uh, looking at expeditions and, and dates and, and cruise reviews and details about the cruise and every single port, returning visitors are going to do a lot more into that research and you can analyze that. A new visitor, uh, on the other hand, may take a, a little longer to convert uh, because he's uh, just going through and essentially uh, picking a cruise, um, you know, on a one time, uh, or he could be doing uh, an excursion. But the returning visitors, you need to understand what they're doing. The idea is to to have the least path to conversion, uh, kind of like the Amazon one click, and that's what you're doing here with new versus returning. So here's the returning visitors. Now they've they've already kind of done a lot of their research, so they're 
their path to closure is a lot smaller. Maybe they've already picked the dates that they want for the cruise. Maybe they've already picked the locations they want. They've already picked the ship they want. And in many cases, they could already have put down a deposit. So what you want to look at from is always prioritize speed with revenue. Um, you want to tackle the highest pages first. This has kind of been a staple in web performance for a long time. You know, tackle the, the page that's going to lead you to the most revenue first. Uh, we think customer journey is a big part of that. If you can cut, as, as we just showed with the returning versus non-returning, if you can cut three steps out of a, out of a, uh, a journey to conversion, you know, you might be cutting 10 or 15 seconds out, um, you know, from a, from a, from a customer journey, whereas if you're speeding individual pages up, you know, maybe you're doing a half a second uh, per page. So your big bang for the buck is to, to look at journey first, but certainly individual pages uh, that are impacting that. And, and, you know, in this case, in this case here, um, you know, the home page isn't somewhere that's going to lead to any revenue at all. So that wouldn't be a place to start. So it'd be nice to understand the essentially the impact of optimizations. This is what we call the digital experience optimizer. And this is, you can think of this as a before and after. If you do a, say I'm running a, uh, a marketing campaign, I've essentially on the left side, I've got the snapshot of what, it, what the site looked like before I made a change. Uh, and then on the, on the right side, I've got after the change. So if I'm rolling out a new loyalty campaign at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning, uh, the left side is going to be what it was. The, new, the right side is going to be what it looked like. And what I'm interested in is the, all the third-party tag and content and images, what impact those changes have had on performance, whether it's good or bad. And in the middle here, you see a lot of red and green. Uh, the idea is to tackle uh, the red uh, areas first, and we'll actually get into a, a couple of real-world examples here when we start talking with, uh, with Eric shortly. All right. So on that, um, we'll pause for a minute. What I'm going to do is we're going to do a, a Q and A with uh, with Eric Leon, who is the senior performance and monitoring architect here at Carnival. Uh, Eric owns performance for the brand, and um, Eric, um, we're ready for the first question. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. So the first one is, and, and just for the audience, uh, you will have a chance uh, Q Q and A um, uh, probably in about ten or fifteen minutes to ask your own questions of uh, of Eric. Uh, so stay tuned. But the first question for Eric is, what were your top two to three challenges and problems that your digital team was facing at Carnival when you started your journey? I think uh, top three. I think that the first one uh, would, would be understanding the impact of our performance, uh, our website performance on revenue. Um, two, onboarding uh, the proper uh, visualization tools and partners. And, uh, and three was building a uh, a, perform a performance culture within the enterprise. I think those were the, the top three bullets I had on, on my plate walking into, into this organization. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Next question, Josh. Before you implemented DEO, how did your team run marketing campaigns? Uh, I definitely think it was, uh, it was more challenging uh, than um, to see how our content and UI uh, affected the user experience. Uh, so meaning from, from whether you're in travel, whether you're in retail, you know, we want to captivate our audience. We want to bring forward the best presentation, website presentation possible, but, but at what cost? And what cost is good, too good, and uh, it starts to affect that, uh, that what we're all chasing, which is a conversion rate and, and the revenue uh, performance. So I think that uh, moving forward, we've, we've been able to, to look at those metrics and, and make proper decisions as to when optimization is, is is good for us and our customer base. All right, awesome. So next one, what's changed in your release management process since you implemented DEO? Um, I think we now have a better uh, visualization, not only into our code base, but also into our, our UX through both RUM and synthetic uh, metrics. Uh, I, think we now, I think we now understand the impact other entities uh, from the enterprise have on performance. Uh, so when I say other entities, I'm talking about uh, teams like content, teams like analytics, marketing, uh, not just development and operations, which is you know the, the the code base and the and how our hardware is performing. I think there's other pieces of the puzzle that need to be held accountable for performance uh, through an enterprise in order for uh, in order for us to all be on the same page. All right, great. Next one, Josh. So this is one everyone's always interested in. What uh, what metrics or KPIs do you provide to management, and, and has anything changed in that area? I th I think so. So with 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 this uh, with this question, it's interesting because I think that um, performance teams as a whole 
are evolving and, and going into a more uh, revenue performance uh, area. But but I think that, that there are still teams that are that are in this space where we're still reporting on server metrics and response times. I think uh, our reporting has changed considerably since now we're, we're able to look at uh, campaign successes and failures. We're able to look at uh, landing uh, landing page and customer journeys. Uh, and why is that important? Is because it, it really helps us understand where our customers are leaving our site. Uh, where in a customer's path we can improve. Um, I think we're now able to, to focus on which pages uh, really need to be addressed and optimized first. Uh, so it's basically 20% of the pages generate 80% of revenue. So now we have visualization into that. And I, and I think that's very powerful for us as, a, as, an, as an e-commerce platform. Awesome. Next one, Eric, is how has your reporting changed since you implemented DEO? I know we've talked about this one quite extensively over the uh, past few months. Well, uh, from, a, from a reporting perspective, uh, I'm never one big on, I've never been one to be big on reporting, but, uh, but, but, the, but the one thing I can say is that our reporting today is real time. We're not having to wait for data to aggregate uh, three, four hours later uh, when it's too late. So, you know, we have, we have the capability to run almost real time. Um, and I say that within a five, you know, plus or minus five minutes, um, you know, we can make real time decisions, whether it's in a campaign, whether it's post release, whether it's uh, anywhere in our, in our life cycle um, or, or a user presentation. QA for attendees. So this is an opportunity to spend uh, uh, several minutes with, uh, with Eric and any questions that any of the audience has, uh, go ahead and fire them up in the, uh, in the portal and, uh, and uh, Josh will take control. Yeah, yeah. looks like we looks have like a few have questions one. that just came in. Uh, John has a question, and I think this is for you, Dan. Uh, he's asking, we use Adobe for marketing analytics. Does this product replace that? Interesting, interesting question. Uh, I actually get this asked this all the time. So the, the area really where we play is we, we essentially what digital experience optimization plays is marketing analytics is, a, is kind of a piece of the pie, but the analytics that it provides don't tell the whole story. Um, you can have the customer journey, which is activity map and, and, uh, and the analytics solutions, uh, one of which you, you mentioned here, John. Uh, but the area that you really don't have is when you're looking at things like exit rates, which you don't have that on the web performance side. When you're looking at exit rates, you don't understand why people are leaving. You just know that that they're they're not converting. Uh, that those pages are have high exit rates, and you know maybe you start pushing. If it's a campaign you're running, or a weekly ad, or uh, ad placement, you start pushing additional incentives out at uh, at your user base, hoping that they'll go ahead and finish the purchase. But if you had the information uh, that you see here uh, with the web performance piece, then you would be able to understand the why. Okay, is the why that the campaign is stale, is, which we showed you with the day over day, you know, which you can do day over day, week over week, month over month, year over year. Is it is it the staleness of the campaign? Or is it something just simple uh, like uh, page page load time? It, it, are the pages just loading so slow that customers are, and users get frustrated and leave, whether it's a single page or, or cumulative in the journey? We've seen uh, several instances where, um, you know, People will stick, you know, stick it in a campaign and a bunch of slow loading pages uh, and try and make the purchase. Uh, we have a term for it called user tenacity, which was coined by one of the folks here at uh, Blue Triangle. Um, but that's a, an area where that product doesn't provide uh, that type of deep deep dive. So, if, mind if I add something there, Dan? No, please. I think uh, I think that that goes back to one of the questions you asked me earlier too. That uh, does it replace? I think I think it makes our data more real time for us, and, and plus you're you're still you're still depending on a fact that if your if your uh, if your pixel or tag is being fired by a tag manager, then that tag manager actually has to fire in order for that for that analytic to to collect any data. Uh, I, I think that uh, that's that's always been tricky for us. I think that's why we like having the the JavaScript injection on on our code level. Uh, as opposed to uh, from a tag manager perspective, it, it, it gives us a little more uh, surety that when that page fires, so will the analytics. Thanks, Eric and Dan. Uh, there's another question from Rachel who asked, do you use this product to look at web performance? It's a technical question, I suppose. I think, is that for me? 
I'll, I'll let yeah, Eric. I'm going to assume it's for you, Eric. <laughs> All right, so so yes, the answer is yes, and it and it provides a, a multi-dimensional uh, view of performance for us. Uh, again, we, we're going through uh, synthetics, uh, real user analytics. Uh, we're looking at uh, the customer journey. We're looking at third-party tagging and how that affects performance on our site. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we're we're seeing how the uh, third-party third-party hosts are performing on our, on our website. So yes, it, it definitely is used for, uh, for performance measures. Great, thanks. Um, this, I'm assuming, is a question for you again, Eric. It's how did you do this prior to Blue Triangle? I'm assuming this means uh, measuring campaign success and performance metrics. So I mentioned one of the topics, uh, one of the bullets I had earlier was uh, the performance culture. So prior, prior to, um, it, it was a lot harder. It, it was a lot harder. It was, it was really solely dependent upon the team that, that owned it, which is either marketing or, or analytics. And this gives us now a visualization down into my, my floor level where, where we can really um, hold other entities accountable uh, for, for their performance on our, on our, on our website. Awesome, thanks. Uh, another one came in that asks, uh, I think this is for you, Eric, again. Uh, were you able to catch a problem on your website by looking at that customer journey flow that you showed earlier? Oh, for sure. I think uh, the, 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 valuable, the valuable metrics here are exit rates and onload times. And when you notice a page is, is exiting at 100%, uh, you can quickly go in and, and, and take a look at what is causing that, uh, that exit rate. Like, for, for example, could it be a 14 megabit image? Could it be something that's just, you know, was, was thought to be the right uh, presentation, but, but, but really, really was hindrance more than, you know, what I was talking about before. Was it really more of a hindrance than it was uh, an optimization or, or, or value to the user? Got it. Thanks, Eric. Really appreciate that. Um, looks like we are done with the Q&A portion. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for joining the webinar today. Uh, you'll soon receive an email with this recording and a copy of the presentation for your reference. So uh, be on the lookout for that coming from myself. Uh, thanks again for joining and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.